In this tutorial, we're going to cover the graphite modeling tools in 3ds Max. So let's start by just making a plane. And then we'll add an edit poly modifier to that. So the graphite modeling tools were originally a plugin by a third party for Autodesk 3ds Max, but um, they were so successful that they integrated them, them into the program and they show up now as a toolbar just below your main toolbar here. So um, over here on the right, you'll see a little down arrow. And if you want to see the full ribbon, you can click that and that'll show uh, the visual the icons of each of the different tools. So it's just a little easier, especially when you're learning to see what these different things do. Now, a lot of these, these only work on edit poly. So you're not going to be able to access these if you're using a standard primitive or different geometry type. So you want to make sure you add an edit poly modifier in order to use these different tools. A lot of them are the same that we've been covering over here. So these edit vertices, for example, different selections like loop and ring. But there are some new features that, that are additional in here. So I just want to cover a few of those. Again, you can change between vertice, edge, border, polygon, or element. Um, you can do things like loops. So for example, if I select you know, um, one edge and hit loop, it'll loop all those. I can then ring which will then ring all those edges. So you can do things like that. You can also do things like dot loops. And one thing that's really helpful if you hover over these, you can see what it does. So for example, if I select this and I then go to dot loop, it'll select every other ring in a loop. So it's kind of nice if you're trying to create a pattern and then, for example, extrude those edges to make some kind of pattern into form. That can be really useful, these different loops and rings. Also, you can grow and shrink, which are pretty helpful. Um, different ways of creating dot loops, like the number of, um, of um, gaps between each selection. If I select this down arrow, I can actually dot loop on a cylinder, for example. So a lot of different things over here. Um, other things I want to show uh, are under, if you go to the polygon subobject level, um, different things you can do to the polygons. Um, for example, extrude bevel, all of that's here, but you can also do these geopolys, which um, you can read what it does, it untangles the polygon section and then creates geometric shapes out of them. So that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, but really what I want to show are these kind of other tools. So if I click up here on the top, um, you have the selection thing. And this is really what I think it's powerful. You can start to select based on patterns. So for example, over here by random, I can select a number of random polygons or a number of random percentage of random subobjects. So if I'm on polygon right now and I select 25% and then hit this arrow, you can see it'll randomly select 25% of those polygons. So it's a really cool way to then make a pattern that, that feels random. Like I could do that and then I could extrude these, for example, um, and get some kind of really interesting geometry that starts to show up from there. Um, you can also do percentage and then hit that arrow. You can, of course, change those numbers. Um, other things you can do uh, include selecting all concave or convex um, um, uh, polygons. So for example, in this case, uh, it's just a flat surface. So let me go ahead and, and add some three-dimensionality to this. I'll go ahead and bend this one, bend this plane along. Let me uh, reduce that a little bit, bend it on the x-axis. And then just for fun, let's add a wave modifier. And then let's also just do a symmetry, just to gain a little complexity in this geometry and really show off what some of these selection features can do. So I want to hit the mirror there. Yeah, maybe I'll even rotate it a little bit. So, okay, so I have this form like this. So let's go back to our edit poly and then go back to our polygon. And now we can use this concave. So if I select concave and increase this number, you'll see it'll select all my concave polygons and then I can increase the tolerance, uh, basically, that I want to achieve. So you can also do convex, which is going to be the opposite of concave. So that's kind of a neat way. Like I could then apply a different material to these polygons, um, and it would have some kind of pattern that relates to the geometry. So that's kind of neat. You can also do it by um, angle. And so this is kind of the angle from the x direction, angle from the z direction. right? So it's all the highest ones and then it kind of selects down from there so that's another neat way to get pattern from this um, you can also do outline so a lot of different things you can do here um, and it's really just a, a really a thing that you should just try different um, options for you can also 
uh, select tops in case you have tops of a geometry like a box or anything that's open so that selects all the edges which can be kind of interesting like maybe I want to take all those polygons and then bevel them or do something you know do something just to those edges to the form um, finally the last thing I want to show and by the way you can sculpt these things so uh, this is not really a great sculpting program like for sculpting I'd, I'd prefer something like Mudbox, where you can really use you know pen tablets and control how you're sculpting the geometry with a brush but there is some potential in here so if you do want to get into that you can use that but the other thing I want to show is under modeling if you select this polygon modeling option or actually it's under the um, under the polygon modeling if you have polygon selected here um, you can go under the um, actually you can do it with edges too but you can select where it says polygon modeling and select generate topology and this is a really interesting tool that allows you to reconfigure the polygon subdivisions of the geometry to match one of these templates so for example if I hover over this it says like for this brick topology um, require one edge to be selection selected so I'll select edge I'll select one of my edges hit that and it will change the form into a running bond kind of uh, pattern which then of course could be really interesting uh, for example actually let me just go ahead and delete that edit poly uh, and add a new one here so if I go back to that select edge select one of my edges hit the brick pattern you know it creates that brick pattern on the surface so then I could after I've done that I could select all these I could inset them for example by polygon and then I could get these cool little window frames I could even delete those and that gives me uh, a really interesting kind of uh, running bond lattice structure you can then add other edit poly uh, other modifiers like shell to give it some thickness you know, if you want to have something that you could 3d print for example and again it's all parametric so you could always go back to your original plane adjust some features here and see how it works um, the one thing to remember is whenever you edit an edit poly, if you go back and change the the dimension of the plane or the number of uh, segments, it's going to have an effect on the form. So that's why you're seeing that kind of weird effect that was happening. So I wouldn't really recommend going too far back if you're going to do some edit poly, like deleting polygons, for example. Okay, so let's just delete a few more of these. I'm going to add another edit poly modifier. And for this one, let's do a different um, of these topologies. So some really interesting one here, like hexagon. This also requires one edge to be selected. Hit that, and it turns everything into hexagons. Of course, it has some issues over here because of the symmetry. But if that's just a plane or a regular primitive, it'll have a really nice effect. So um, you can play around with different ones and actually change some of the operations here or parameters here to get different results.